Right, yeah, well, good afternoon, guys. Hope you're having a wicked day. Welcome back to the videos. Taking a little bit of a break from the Falcon Ute for a car that doesn't really get much love on the channel whatsoever. Actually, weirdly enough, there is a weird little, like, certain little tiny percentage of you that actually like uh, the mods on the BRZ, which is quite funny. This little thing has been an absolute menace. I love it. I've taken it to so many tracks now. Completely stock engine, completely stock drive line. The thing has taken on Phillip Island, Sandown, Haunted Hills, uh, soon to be Winton, soon to be a lot of different tracks. But um, this thing has been absolutely brilliant. And today we're gonna be installing a quick mod that I've wanted to do for a little bit ever since I saw it advertised from CubeSpeed. You guys might remember that name from all the RX-7 and R33 short shifters that we have done over the past couple of years. Well, recently they actually developed one for the BRZ. So I thought I'd install that in today's video and then we might even go down and I've been wanting to install the XR50 decals and everything on the ute, so we'll do that at the end of the video. But for now, I'm gonna quickly grab this box down and show you what's inside it. All right, guys, well this right here is my cube speed box. Looks pretty good, I know. But it's what's inside that makes it absolutely incredible. So first of all, you're gonna get some O-rings, some new centering springs, and then also I ended up getting um, the option that also has a new rubber uh, grommet for the back as well to make it all feel nice and brand new. There's some new bolts included as well. And then the best thing, which is this right here. This right here is the new cube speed billet short shifter. There is so much going on and I love it. Holy. The six speed pattern there too, with uh, the reverse lockout and everything. God damn, it's so nice. All right, do I have any idea how to install this thing? Absolutely not. I'm actually going to be reading some instructions. I hope they're instructions anyway. I have to do it from under the car. Oh. Okay, so do I actually know what I'm doing? No, I'm just gonna start taking bits off. I've, I've never actually pulled apart this car in my life. And so I feel, feels weird. Oh, I put that on real tight, didn't I? The Amazon special shift not broken. The good old, I'm not mucking around anymore. So you actually do have to remove the entire center console, which is great fun. And now this should just lift out and up and away without scratching anything. I'm gonna scratch everything. Oh, that's why that never worked. It was never connected. <laughs> All right, now that you've got the handbrake area exposed, you can take those little pull tabs out. They just sort of twist out by hand. Be nice and easy. Excellent. And then this should come out, which is nice. And then looks like a couple of 12 mils. I don't know why, but absolutely everything in here has all been like loose. Like I haven't touched this bolt yet. <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. And once that dust boots off, you're left with this little mechanism here. Um, I don't, why is it not shifting? I don't know. Oh, it is. So mine's feeling a little bit sloppy and gross. It, it still feels great, to be fair. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be uh, taking off this bracket right here. I'm gonna have to set that up a little bit later, but this is your reverse lockout. So if you can see, it lifts over and then up and across. Oh, I was in gear. You can see it lifts up, across, and then doesn't allow you to do that whilst you're in first. So this is what this little plate does, but we're gonna be removing this. Make sure you definitely keep it around. Okay, now theoretically, I should be able to get the shifter from here. It does say to get it from underneath the car, but I reckon there's enough room there. I can grab that out. So let's quickly grab this. So I reckon, beautiful. Just like that. Once that pin is now slid out, you should theoretically be able to lift it up. And it comes out. There we go. That's how to do that. All right, so we now have everything out of the BRZ and it is looking, it's looking pretty bare. It's looking pretty good. So, um, so now let's look at the actual short shifter itself and what it actually does. So in comparison to the OEM shifter, you guys can see that this, uh, in between this bush right here is the, uh, the pivot point for the shifter. Now what you'll notice is on the short shifter, 
ironically is actually longer down the bottom. <laughs> what that means is you have a lot more leverage on the bottom of this to actually shift the gears. So if you think about a standard OEM shift, like if you were to shift to third, that little pivot point at the very bottom is only moving from there to there. Whereas if you were to do the same for this one right here, if you shift to third, it's got so much more movement at the bottom. So that's why with a short shifter, you only need to click little tiny bits because this bit here between there and there is doing all the work. Now, what is a short shifter good for? For one, it feels better. For two, it can cut your shifting times down if you're chasing tents on the track. There's a few other benefits to it. They're the main two. All right, so we're now gonna jack up the car because we have to install this bushing right here as well. And then we can get to disassembling the entire factory OEM shifter and then putting it all on this one right here. So, we're in there underneath the car and we're gonna be doing some quick little things underneath, changing out some bushings and then also changing a few little things as well. But you guys can see the bush up there is just held on by, it looks like two 12 mils, so let's quickly zap them out. But before then, it's gonna be easier apparently to drop the tail shaft, so let's quickly do that too. So I've just undone those two bolts there and as you can see, this all now moves freely so I can take this little bracket off right here, should be able to, hopefully I can do it one handed. All right, so with this one here, I actually had to get to the top of the car and lever it out, but we're gonna be installing this thing right here, which is a new shifter bush. So if I can put you guys down here, you can sort of see what I'm doing, but. <laughs> All right, so I have now swapped out everything underneath the car that I need to. The only thing I haven't done is the centering springs. So these little things right here, unfortunately, I have no idea where to install them. We have to do a little bit more research and I can always do that after the fact anyway, but the main thing was getting that bushing done underneath. So it's all mint now. We'll lower the car, install the shifter. All right, so with the original shifter, all you need to do is cut off the castle bush right there. And then you just have to get this plate right here, disassemble your cube speed shifter, put the plate on top, and then this is ready to drop straight into the car. Now I'm hoping it's like this, but we'll see how we go. Um, something like that. Let's go into place. Beautiful. Make sure that's all sitting flush, which it is. Cool, excellent. And then we'll also get the reverse lockout switch as well, but I just want to make sure which way it actually goes. I'll find out. All right, so the shifter's now in. She's feeling tight, which is awesome. That's reverse, I think, pretty sure, something like that. Um, anyway, now we have to do the locking collar and the reverse lockout. So we're gonna do a whole bunch of setup and sort of piece the rest of the shifter together. Um, also, they have a new uh, collar, which has to be attached down there as well. So I'll quickly do all that and then she'll be installed. All right, so the next big thing you wanna check for is the clearance between your reverse lockout and the actual shifter itself. What you should be doing is going into first gear and just making a mil or so gap just so that way when you go into first it doesn't exactly lock it out but then also if you lift this up which is your reverse lockout you can go all the way over and up into reverse so that's what that does right there so yeah but i've got it set up within a mil so looks pretty good you can still pretty easily get into first as you can see Nice and easy. All right, I'm gonna put all the trims back on and then we'll uh, assemble the shifter for the last time. All right, yeah, well, the short shifter's all installed and looks absolutely amazing. So the reverse lockout works flawlessly and then, oh God, first, <laughs> second, so different. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Absolutely awesome. I could imagine probably putting my clutch down would make it feel much better. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely stoked with how it all feels. So much tighter than factory. So um, let's take it for a quick little rip. All right, yeah, so quick little two, three. You should be mint. Or one, two. Feels all right. What do you reckon, Sarah? Yeah, it feels about the same. Didn't make it any faster, so. Yeah, it feels a little bit more um, direct. Does it really? I think so. I like the black. I like the black too. It feels um, it feels good. Like I thought it'd be a little bit more annoying. Like now it's a little bit heavier, but it's quite nice. It's not bad. Down into a 40 zone. I actually love this car so much. So do I. It's great. My favorite. It's a brilliant car. Love it for us. But then we want to quickly shift to third. Oh, Jesus. 
That was a short shift. That was aggressive. That was a short shift. Cube speed, you've done it again. My shifting times have improved. Now I'm gonna go rip my 130 at sand down. Incredible. All right, well, the short shifter is in and it's looking phenomenal. Check this out. Find the rest of the car that's absolutely disgusting, but um, that short shifter is clean as hell. Once again, thank you very much to the guys over at Cube Speed for allowing me to be one of the first people to install that thing on YouTube for you guys. If you guys do want a beautiful short shifter, make sure to jump down into the comments and pick one up for yourself. All right, so instead of doing anything else and doing stickers to the ute, I'm actually gonna do something that's actually gonna be worthwhile to do. And it's had this horrible vibration ever since I got the car and I had a little bit of a look under the car when we were doing the trans service. Sure enough, all of the tail shaft pushers are pretty much done for, so we're gonna replace all of them. It's nice and cheap. We're not gonna be upgrading or doing anything, but so you know, while we have all the cars running, I may as well make one not running and go get it fixed. Tile shaft is super easy, it's just annoying doing it on the ground. It's the worst. So I've already removed everything out the back. I'm um, up to the last two bolts at the front. We should be able to just pull this straight out. <laughs> Probably would have been way better to show you guys outside the car, but either way, um, this uh, bushing is completely done for. It is split entirely throughout. Um, this boot in the center as well also has a whole bunch of splits and cracks and it's leaking a whole bunch of grease. So fair to say this needed the rebuild. We are also going to be changing the Guibo as well. So that's all going to be going. But yeah, managed to fit in the BRZ. Yeah, good. With plenty of space. All right, guys, well, we're back in the garage at the moment. It's been two days. I took the tail shaft down to GJ and Danny Nong and they just got the whole thing reconditioned. It's a bit expensive, more expensive than I thought, but I did a brilliant job. The thing is all nice and powder coated black. I didn't actually get a video of it outside the car, but it's currently just chilling on the ground right there. So this tail shaft got absolutely everything done to it. So the two CVs ended up getting replaced as well as the center bearing. All new boots uh, ended up getting a new rubber Guibo. And oh my God, it got, got absolutely everything. It was a little bit, a bit more than I was hoping to spend, but it's all right. The guys have assured me that this one here should last up to about 350 or so kilowatt, depending on how I drive it. So you guys will know that we like to push our cars on standard drive line, so whatever. The guys did a brilliant job. They turned it around in like half a day, so stoked about that. I'm gonna put it back in the U, take it out for a drive, see how she rips. <laughs> 